Hey guys, I'm T, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today, I'll be teaching how to make a keyhole puff sleeve top. We went regal with this one and landed on a retro princessy vibe. We have some luscious short puff sleeves, lovely texture thanks to the Trinity stitch, and a keyhole behind the neck for added class and style. Speaking of, if bold and trendy crochet designs fits your style, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet designs and patterns with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category for yarn work, but I used a total of 375 grams of yarn, and that is 550 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite holiday food. For me, it's a tie between sweet potatoes and stuffing. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using five stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. half double crochet, double crochet, and trinity stitch. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our five millimeter hook and start off by making an odd number chain starting from one inch underneath our underarm down to where you want the bottom of this top to be so cropped full length or a dress I'd like for mine to be full length so I'm going to make a chain of 59 and that's 14 inches or 36 centimeters now that we have our chain we're gonna get started on our first Trinity stitch so let's all start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to start with just one single crochet. Now our first trinity stitch is going to be different than all of our other ones, so to do the first one, we're always going to start with just one single crochet, and then we're going to need to pull up four loops. So we're going to be using a medium to loose grip, and we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same chain that our single crochet is in. So bring our hook down, into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, we should have two loops on our hook. We're going to pull up another loop into that following chain, so into that next available chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through for three loops on our hook, and like I said we wanted four, so we're going to pull up another loop into that following chain. So insert, yarn over, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then chain one to finish off our first trinity stitch. Now let's get started on the second one. It has the same idea as the first one, so let's all start by inserting our hook into that same chain that our last trinity stitch was worked into. So this one right here should be occupied. So bring our hook down into that chain, yarn over, pull through. And just like our previous trinity stitch, we're going to want to pull up four loops. So into that next available chain, you're going to insert your hook, pull through, and then once more into that next available chain, insert your hook, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, there we go, and pull through all four loops, and to finish off our trinity stitch, we're going to do a chain one. Now for the rest of the row, except for the last one, we're going to be repeating, so let's do this again inserting our hook into that last chain that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, into that following chain, insert, 
pull through and then into the chain right after that pull through for four loops on our hook yarn over pull through all four chain one to finish off that trinity stitch and all together we should have one two three trinity stitch sets let's just do one more a little bit faster so inserting our hook into that same chain that our last trinity stitch has worked into we're going to insert pull through into that following insert pull through and then into that following chain insert pull through when we have those four loops yarn over pull through all four of those loops and don't forget to chain one after we pull through all four and all together we should have four trinity stitch sets we're going to continue to repeat our previous trinity stitch until we have two chains left so we have made our way all the way down with our trinity stitch and we should all have two chains left now we're going to do the last one so we finished off our second to last trinity stitch with our chain one so that's per usual and we're going to start off our last trinity stitch the same way that we have for all the other ones so we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into that last stitch pull through we're going to pull up a loop into that following chain insert pull through and then pull up a loop into that last chain insert pull through for a total of four loops on our hook then yarn over and pull through all four of those loops now from here since we're at the end of our odd number row and we do need to do an increase we're going to insert into that last stitch that this trinity stitch has worked into a single half double and double crochet and that is our increase so we are not going to do our chain one instead we're going to insert our hook into that same last chain with a single crochet into that same last chain with a half double crochet and then into that same last chain with a double crochet once more and that is our increase and now that we have just finished up our increase we are all going to chain one and flip our work to get started on our row two and our row two is going to start off the same way that our row one started off as well so start with one single crochet into the top of the last stitch from our previous row so into that stitch with one single crochet then we're going to do our trinity stitch so to do the first one we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is in pull through into that following stitch pull through and into the stitch right after that pull through for a total of four loops on our hook just like the first row then we're going to yarn over pull through all four and do a chain up of one to finish that first trinity stitch and now we're going to do our second trinity stitch so that's going to start by inserting our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into so into that occupied stitch go ahead and insert your hook pull through into that following stitch pull through and into the stitch right after that pull through because we want a total of four loops on our hook then we're all going to yarn over pull through all four of those loops chain one to secure and we're going to continue to do our second trinity stitch making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left so we are now at the end of our row two we should all have one two stitches left and we're going to finish it off with our last trinity stitch now at the end of every even number row we're going to keep this blunt because this is the bottom of our top so we're going to start off this last trinity stitch the same way that we started off all the other ones so we're going to start by inserting our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into pull through into that following stitch pull through and into that following stitch which should be the last stitch pull through yarn over pull through all four and once we pull through all four we are not going to do a chain one we're actually going to single crochet into that same stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into so into that last stitch it is occupied stitch we're going to insert with one single crochet to keep it blunt and that is the end of our row two now let's just get started on our following row we're all going to chain one and flip our work now let's get started on our row three so each of our odd number rows is always going to start off with a single crochet for our first trinity stitch so it's going to start with a single crochet and then to do the first one we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is in pull through into that following stitch pull through and into the stitch right after that pull through yarn over pull through all four and chain one to finish off our first trinity stitch for this row 
Now getting started on our second trinity stitch, just as a refresher, insert your hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into, into that following stitch, and into the stitch right after that for a total of four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. And from here, we're going to continue to repeat our second trinity stitch until we have two stitches left, and then I'll meet you back so we can increase it together. So we are back, and we have one, two, three rows nearly finished. And at the end of our row three, we should all have two stitches left. Now let's close off our row three the same way that we closed off our row one. So insert your hook into that last stitch from our previous trinity stitch, pull through into that following stitch, which is our second to last stitch, pull through, and then into that last stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four loops. Then to close off any odd number row, we're going to do a single half double double into that last stitch. So inserting into that last stitch with a single, into that same last stitch with a half double, and then into that same last stitch once more with a double crochet, and that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to mid collarbone. And we wanna make sure that we're placing this tail end about one inch underneath our underarm and not anywhere beneath that. Because if this tail end falls any lower than that, then it's going to result for a really big balloon sleeve and that's not what we want for this pattern. So I'll meet you back right after an odd number row or along the top so we can get started on the chest portion. My underarm portion is all finished. I have a total of 13 rows. My width is now four inches or 10 centimeters and my total height from my long side down to the bottom is roughly 17 and a half inches or 45 centimeters. But first be sure to insert your stitch marker into your last increase row so we know where it ends. Now we're going to start working on the chest portion which is just going to be our trinity stitch rows but now with no increases and no decreases. So pretty simple. So all we're gonna do, since we should all end along the top, we're all going to chain one and flip our work. And all we're gonna do is our trinity stitch, like I said, with no increases and no decreases. So we're gonna continue to do our trinity stitch all the way down, making sure that the end of this row ends with the single crochet, chain one, flip our work, and then do our trinity stitch all the way back up, making sure that following row ends with a single crochet as well. And from here, we're just going to continue to repeat this row until we have a chest portion that reaches across our chest over to mid collarbone on the other side. So I've made my way all the way across my chest. I have a total of 31 rows and my width is now nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on the following underarm portion. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Now since we did an increase into every other row on the other underarm portion, we're now going to do a decrease into every other row. Now we did an increase of three on the other side, so now we're going to do a decrease of three half double crochets. So getting started, we're all going to yarn over. We're gonna insert our hook into that first stitch from our previous row, pull through into that second stitch from our previous row, pull through and then into that following stitch pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. And all we're gonna do from here is yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets. Now for the beginning of all of our decrease rows, that decrease is going to kind of be the substitute for the single crochet. So what I mean by that is we're going to pretend that this last stitch that our half double crochet was into is a single crochet that we would do as if we were starting up a new row. So getting started on our following trinity stitch, we're gonna insert our hook into that last stitch that our decrease of three was into. We're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, into that following, insert, pull through, and into that following, insert, pull through for one, two, three, four loops on our hook. Then just yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and don't forget to chain one to close off that first trinity stitch. And just like how we did on the other side, we're gonna be inserting a stitch marker into the edge of this row so we know where the underarm starts and ends. Let's just do one more stitch. Inserting our hook into the last stitch from our previous trinity stitch, we're gonna insert, pull through, insert, pull through, insert, pull through for four loops on our hook, 
then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. We're going to continue to do our trinity stitch, making our way all the way down, making sure that we end off our row with a single crochet. Now, once when we're on the bottom, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and do our trinity stitch all the way back up. And then I'll meet you back to get started on the following trinity stitch row, just to remind you how we're going to do a decrease once more. I am back and I have just finished up one, two rows for our decrease underarm portion. Now let's get started on the following underarm portion, which is going to start with our decrease of three half double crochets. So we're going to chain two and flip our work. So just to do the decrease together, we're all going to yarn over, insert our hook into that last stitch from our previous row, pull through into that following stitch, pull through into the stitch right after that, pull through, yarn over, pull through all of our loops, and we're now going to treat that decrease as our single crochet. So just to do the first trinity stitch together, we're going to insert our hook into that last stitch that our decrease was worked into. So insert, pull through, into that following, pull through, and into the stitch right after that, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to secure, and that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as our other underarm portion. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and the entirety of my front panel is finished. I have a total of 44 rows and my width is just about 13 inches or 33 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to get started on the back panel and it's actually going to start off the same way that we did for the front panel and actually have the first bit of my back panel all finished up. So getting started on our back panel, we're all going to start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the front panel, and then we're going to be doing the same type of increases. So at the end of every odd number row, we're going to be doing an increase of three, and then every even number row, we are not going to be doing any increases. So we should have the same type of incline for the back panel. But for the back panel, we aren't going to have this neckline. We're going to continue to work our way all the way up until this portion can reach mid back. And once when you have this, make sure that you end along the top just so I can show you how we're going to be doing the second half of our back panel, but it's actually going to be done the same way as the second underarm portion. So like I said, the first half of my back panel is all finished. I have a total of 15 rows and that's five and a half inches or 13 centimeters. And for the back panel, we aren't going to have that neckline portion. It's just going to be a house shape. So it's going to come to a point and then go straight back down. So now that we have the first half finished up, we're going to get started on the following row, which is going to start with a decrease. So since we're all on the top, let's chain two and flip our work. Now the second half of our back panel is going to be done the same exact way as the second underarm portion. So let's just get this first row started. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch, pull through into that second stitch, pull through, following, pull through for five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets. And just to do the first trinity stitch, we're going to start by inserting our hook into that last stitch that our decrease was in, pull through, into that following, pull through, and into that following, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and chain one to finish off this trinity stitch. And we're going to continue on with our trinity stitch to reach the end of the row, making sure that we end it with a single crochet. And then from here, we're going to continue to do our decrease row and then our following row with no increases or no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as this first portion of our back panel. And I'll meet you back once we have this all finished up. All right, so I am back and I am all finished up with my back panel. I have a total of 13 rows and my width is just about 10 inches or 26 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one and cut after my last row and now we're going to seam our front and back panel together. So we're all going to start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel and then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both panels. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to do a single crochet seam working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So we're all going to insert our hook into that following stitch into the front panel, insert your hook into that following stitch into the back panel, insert your hook and single crochet. Let's do that again into that next stitch into the front panel, insert 
into that next stitch into the back panel, insert and single, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our sleeve, but we are first gonna have to do some prep for our sleeve. So let's all flip our work right side out, meaning the seams that we have are along the inside, and let's flip our work so that we're looking at the back. So what we're first going to need to do for our sleeve prep is figure out how many single crochets we're going to have from our side seam all the way to the top point of our back panel. And then we're also going to have to make a prep chain that reaches up to our shoulder so that we know how many stitches we're going to have in total for the back. And then we're going to take those total amount of numbers and subtract it with the total amount of single crochets that we're gonna have within the front so that we know how many chains we need to have to work our way up to the shoulder for the front panel so that we have the front and the back panel sleeve portion exactly the same for the sleeve. So when it comes to single crocheting up the back portion, we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, starting with two single crochets. So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. So we're gonna start by counting this out first just to figure out the amount of stitches that we have it. And then we're going to actually do the first row. This is my first side row right here. So I'm gonna count two single crochets into there. This is my following side row. So I'm going to count one. My following side row, I'm gonna count two. My following side row, I'm going to count one. So I had a total of 15 rows from the first row from my side seam all the way up to the point of my shoulder. For me, I counted out a total of 23 single crochets, so let's just count that out together really quickly. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. So I have 23 stitches working my way all the way up until I reach the top corner stitch of my back panel. Now from here, go ahead and insert your five millimeter hook into that top point, and then you're going to make a chain that reaches all the way up to our shoulder. Now keeping in mind that this point that we have is right at the base of our neck, so we're going to want to take our chain and stretch it outwards towards our shoulder a little bit so that we get the proper sizing. Now I've actually measured mine out. I need three and a half inches or nine centimeters, so I made a chain 17. And one last quick tip, the amount of stitches that we have here, plus the chain that we make that reaches up to our shoulder, we want to make sure that that total amount ends on an even number. So counting my 23 stitches plus the 17 chains that I made for my measurement, I had a total of 40 stitches just for my back panel. Now once when you have the entire measurement that you need for the back half of your sleeve, keep that in mind and now we're going to count the amount of stitches that we need for the front panel. So we have flipped our work over and we're now looking at the front panel. So we're going to do the same thing that we have for the front. We're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, starting with two single crochets. I have a total of 13 side rows right here, so I should have a total of 20 single crochets when I count it out, so let's count mine out together. This is my first side row that I have right over here. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is my last side row that I have right here, right before I started working across my chest with no more increased rows. So I have a total of 20 stitches right here. So I'm gonna take the total amount of stitches that I had for the back portion of my sleeve that is including the chain that we made, and that's 40 for me. So we're going to take that number and, and subtract it by the amount of stitches that we just counted out for our front panel. And since we just counted out 20 for me, I know that I need to make a chain of 20, and that should reach up to my shoulder so that we have a total of 40 stitches for the back panel and 40 stitches for the front panel. Now make sure you keep in mind how many chains you have in the back and in the front because you won't want to mix that up because otherwise one side's gonna be a little bit shorter than the other. But once we have that all figured out, we can now get started on our first row, which is our single crochet row with our chain. So making sure that our work is still hooked right side out, meaning the seams that we have are along the inside, we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. So now that our hook is in through that last stitch that we have right next to our side seam, we're going to do our single crochet row. And since I'm working in through my front first, I should have a total of 20 single crochets since we just counted that out together. So let's just find my first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm gonna find that side row and insert with two single crochets. So there's one, and there's two. 
into my following side row, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Let's do that again. Into my following side row, I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with two single crochets. So there's one, there's two, and then into my following side row, insert with just one single crochet. And we're going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row until we reach our stitch marker. So I've made my way up with my single crochet row. And now I'm going to make a chain of the number that we just figured out. So for me, I needed to make a chain of 20 so that I had a total of 40 on both sides of my sleeve. So I already made that chain. Now this is the first portion of my sleeve. We want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into that last chain so that we know where one of our middle stitches is. And now from here, we're going to continue on with the chain that we made for the back panel. So for me, I needed a total of 17 stitches from my top corner stitch from my back that reached all the way up to the top of my shoulder. So from here, I'm going to make another 17 chains. We just want to make sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into that following chain that we have so that we have two middle stitches when it comes to our sleeve. All right, so I made my way all the way up. I have my front panel sleeve and my back panel sleeve. Now that I have this total amount of chains, we're now going to single crochet it into the top corner stitch of the back panel. So I'm going to flip my work over. So what we're going to do is find that top corner stitch of our back panel and then we're going to insert with a single crochet that's going to count as our first single crochet, working our way all the way down the back panel. So just into that top corner stitch, remembering that we're starting our alternating between one to two single crochets with two single crochets into that first side row. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with one single crochet that connects our chain and counts as our first single crochet for this section and then a second single crochet into that same top loop. Again, this is my following side row into that top loop with one single crochet. Let's just do one more set. This is my following side row. Find that top loop with two single crochets. So there's one and there's two. And then my following side row insert my hook into that top loop with just one single crochet. Continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. And when we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. And just to double check, make sure that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers. All right, so our first prep row is all finished up. We did double check and make sure that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers and they should be an even number. But what we're gonna do from here is just clean up our prep right now. So just put one single crochet into every stitch and chain, making our way all the way up and over, making sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into those same two middle stitches. And then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the length of our sleeve. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up our single crochet row for our prep. Now we're going to get started on the length of our sleeve. So for this pattern, we're going to have a short puff sleeve. So for every size, we're all going to start by making a chain three with our six millimeter hook. Now with our chain three, we're going to do one Trinity stitch set and then close it off with an increase. So after our chain three, we're going to block off that last chain do a chain one, that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. Then we're gonna single crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. And then we're going to do our first Trinity stitch that also ends on an increase. So start it off the same way that we start off all of our first Trinity stitches, insert our hook into that same stitch that our single crochets in, pull through into that following stitch, pull through and then into that following stitch, which is also our last chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then right after we pull through all four, we're going to do our increase, the same increase that we did for the underarm. So single, half double, double into that same last chain. So insert your hook with one single crochet into that same last chain with a half double, and then into that same last chain with a double crochet. That is our row one all complete. Now let's slip stitch it into the base. So what we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to close off this row. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect our row. And now we need to work our way up to the following row, so we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. Now for everyone's row two, we are going to have two Trinity stitch sets, so let's get that started. Our row two, or any even number row, is not going to have any increases or decreases. So let's all start by finding that first stitch from our previous row, not those slip stitches, and do our first trinity stitch, which starts with a single. 
and then finishing up the first trinity stitch the same way that we normally would. And then we should have one more trinity stitch left to do and since we're at the end we're going to close it with just one single crochet. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through, and insert again, which should be that last stitch. Pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and just like how we did for the end of our body rows, we're going to put one single crochet into that last stitch to keep it blunt. Now from here it's basically going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So let's get the following row started with a chain one and flip our work. And just do the first one, single crochet and do our first trinity stitch and continue to do our trinity stitch making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. And we are there. So let's get started on this following trinity stitch which is going to be our increase. So inserting your hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, into that following, pull through, following which should be our last stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and then we're going to close it off with an increase. So into that same last stitch, a single, a half double, and then a double crochet. And now we're going to connect it into the base again. So into that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off our row three. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then repeat. Remember when we're at the base working our way down, that's our even number row, so we aren't going to have any increases or decreases. So just find that last stitch from our previous row, do our trinity stitch, and that's it. From here we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows making our way all the way up until we reach our first stitch marker stitch. Since we should all have an even number of stitches we should end along the outer edge and then I will meet you back. So we are back and we have made our way all the way up to our stitch marker stitch with our increased side of our sleeve. Now we're going to mirror everything that we just did here and instead of doing increases we're going to be doing decreases. So since we all should have ended along the outer edge what we're going to do is chain one flip our work and then do our trinity stitch all the way back down. Now for this first trinity stitch row, for our decrease end, we are not going to be doing any increases or decreases because we didn't do any increases or decreases for the last trinity stitch row that we did and we need everything to be even. So I'll meet you back once we make our way all the way down. So I just made my way all the way down with my first trinity stitch row for my decrease side. I made my way all the way down with my trinity stitch and we did not do any increases or decreases into this row, we just closed it off with a single crochet. Same way that we would close off our trinity stitch as if we were along the outer edge. Now from here we're going to connect it into the base and it's going to be done exactly the same way as the increased side of our sleeve. So into that following stitch which should be our next stitch marker stitch, we're going to insert our hook in through there with a slip stitch and now our first row for our decrease side is finished. And just to work our way up to the following row we're going to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base and flip our work. Now remember none of those slip stitches count as a stitch. And now that we're at the base working our way down towards the outer edge we're going to start this row with a decrease of three half double crochets. So this decrease portion of our sleeve is going to be done exactly the same way as the second underarm portion that we did for both the front and the back panel. So let's just do this together. We're all going to yarn over. Find that last stitch from our previous row making sure that it's not into those two slip stitches. We're going to insert our hook, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through and into the stitch right after that, pull through for five loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through all five and our decrease is finished and now we're going to do another trinity stitch. So just as a refresher we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch that that last decrease was into. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through, insert, pull through for four loops on our hook then yarn over, pull through all four, and make sure you chain one to finish off every trinity stitch. And we're going to continue to repeat these two rows making our way all the way down until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. So I am back. I have just made my way all the way around and finished up the decrease side of my sleeve and now we're going to seam everything together. So let's all start by making sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to do the same seam that we did for the sides, so a single crochet seam. So we're going to pull through everything. And since we already know how to do this, let's just do the first one. Let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel. Insert your hook, 
first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, let's get started on our cuff. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is swift right side out, and we're now going to be inserting our 6mm hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to be doing a decrease of two single crochets into every side row to help cinch our sleeve. So to do the first one, we're all going to start by grabbing that first side row that we have right here and insert into that top loop pull through. This is my following side row. We're then going to find that top loop, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. That is our decrease. Let's do this again. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop, pull through. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue to do our decrease of two single crochets, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. So our single crochet row along the bottom of our sleeve is finished. Now we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I'd like for mine to be an inch and a half or three centimeters, so I made a chain six. And we're now going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So we're going to bring our hook down, and into that chain, all we're going to do is yarn over, and gently pull through both of those loops that's on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and gently pull through everything, and that's it. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row could be too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. Now connecting our slip stitch rows into the base, it's going to be connected the same way that our sleeve was connected. So connecting any odd number row, all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, and insert with a slip stitch, now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just need to connect it. And we do need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Flip our work, that slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch. And now to get some ribbing and some stretch, we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, yarn over, and gently pull through everything. Again, into that following stitch, insert into that back loop. Gently yarn over and pull through everything, and that's it. We're going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and connect it into the base the same way that we just did, and continue doing that, making our way all the way around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you back so we can seam it all together. We've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows for our cuff, and now we're going to seam everything together. So this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so we're going to make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're all going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and inserting only in through that front loop, and then finding our next available stitch into the back panel, and inserting only in through that back loop. Then when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch, into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Alright, so we are back and we have just finished up both of our sleeves, and now we're going to tie a knot for our keyhole that we're going to have within the back, and then we can finish this piece up with our collar. So all we're going to do from here is try on our piece, and then we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into the stitch that we have that's right at the base of our neck when it comes to our back panel. Now you get to determine how high or how low this is, but you do want to make sure that you're inserting your stitch marker into the same stitch on both sides because it does need to be even. Now from my first chain that I have along both sides, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch, and that's roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters. Now how we're going to tie it off is just to take our yarn 
insert it in through both stitches on both sides and just tie a really secure knot. Now, there's not going to be any specific way to do it. Just tie it as tight as you can, making sure that it won't come loose. But just to make you guys feel better, it will be secured down because of our collar that we're about to do as well. So go ahead and insert your stitch marker, tie off your keyhole, and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the collar. So now that we have tied off our keyhole, let's get started on our collar. We're all going to start with a single crochet row. So start by inserting your 5mm hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the top of our shoulder. It doesn't need to be a specific stitch, it just needs to be along the top. Now we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every stitch, working our way down. Once we reach the front of our front panel, so working across our side rows, I will meet you back to show you what we're going to be doing into there. Now that we have reached our side rows along our front panel, all we're going to do working our way across is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So let's just do the first set. This is my first side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop with one, and then into that following side row, which is this one right here for me, two single crochets. So there's one, and there's two, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down. Once we reach our shoulder chain, we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around. Then slip stitch into that chain space. Alright, so I've made my way all the way around with my single crochet row, and now we're going to do our collar. So our collar is going to be done exactly the same way as our cuff, so from where we're at, we're going to start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our collar to be. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain four. So now that I have my chain, I'm just going to do my slip stitch row down. Connect it into the base the same way that we did for the cuff, and then do our back loop slip stitch row back up. And then from there we're just going to do back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around. And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you back so we can seam it all together. Alrighty, so I have made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch row for my collars. I don't have any more stitches left to work into. And now we're going to seam it up the same way that we did our cuff. So let's make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to yarn over, pull through everything, and let's just do the first one. So let's all start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain of one and cut. So we have just finished seaming up our collar and we are all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.